TitleMatchNetwork.com. What are all your memories of the match, I guess, after the Piper match went on and you had an incredible match in you know, Wembley with David Boyd? Well, the, the Piper match was like, I started to have these really good pay per views the one with Henning, the one with Piper. And I, what, in winning that match with um, Piper, um, when Vince had laid out the, the storyline, he goes, I'm probably going to have you drop the belt to Sean at probably SummerSlam. I'm thinking of putting the belt on Shawn Michaels. And asked me if I had a problem with that. I said, No, I don't, which I didn't. I'm happy to do that. <clears throat> so I know it went through like till September and it was up in the air about where the pay per view was going to be. It was either going to be in Washington, D.C. or it was going to be in uh, England. Right. And I remember I went to Vince with two scenarios. I said, I have two, an idea for you. I said, and I, and I made out, made it very clear that I didn't want to affect things with Sean. I knew Sean was the, the like the, the expected guy to get the belt here. Right. I wasn't trying to pull strings or anything like that or play, play favorites or anything. But I said, I have two ideas that maybe you could use. Um, and I think it was one of the few. Is that tape? No, it's our tape. Oh, okay. It was one of the few guys to ever, um, I think, come to Vince with the idea, one of the rare guys, anyways, that comes to Vince about dropping a title for somebody else. This, this the whole scenario I laid out had nothing, to, I had nothing to gain in it other than the artistic um, creativity of, of putting two great concepts together. You can pick which one you want. I said, I could wrestle Bulldog in a babyface match in London. They'll tear the house down. I said, it'll be the greatest match they ever had and, and put them over. I said, I can guarantee you that nobody will ever top it. And he goes, are you positive? And I said, I'm positive. He goes, what's your other idea? I said, well, there's this crazy match I've been trying to push on you for years, the ladder match. I've been trying to get you to look at it. If you just look at it one time, you can see what the concept is. It's a great match for for suspense. And, and I said, I think I could do that with Sean if you want. And that's how I could drop the belt to him if you do it in Washington. Right. I said, but I think that's the way. It was just ideas. And he goes, I've never seen one. I told him a little bit about the match. You just wanted a house show right with Sean. Yeah, well, that was right. the whole thing. I said, I tell you, I, I told him before I even told him the idea, just so you know. I said, I tell you this idea under the promise that you promise me you'll never do it with anyone else. He goes, I promise. So I told him the idea for the ladder match. That's another line that Vince uh, McMahon uh, was part of. So he said, okay, I want you and I remember that night, he said, I want to see a ladder match. And I said, I want to see it in Maine somewhere, Portland, Maine, just to try out. And we were telling Sean, trying to explain it to Sean. Sean was, he had no idea what to do. We went in there kind of, I just wanted to show, it was just the match that's on the tape. If it's out there at all, I think it's on a video or something. Yeah, it's yeah. on the Marshall tape. But the thing about it was, it was just a demonstration. We weren't trying, it was like a TV taping. Right. We were just, we were, we were just trying to give you an idea what the match is. We weren't trying to kill each other, have this like, you know, it's an unbelievable match. It was just a demonstration of see if you like the idea. So I always felt bad if for me like, that was my match. And I let Scott and uh, Sean you know, talk about it like, like it was their baby. That was ripped off big time. It was uh, not fair that they gave my idea to two other guys that a never appreciated it and never um, um, you know never met, failed to mention it quite often. Uh, and it was never their idea that they ripped it off. But anyway, so he said Wembley was the thing that it was going to be me and Bulldog. Bulldog, unfortunately, um, sat home all summer, um, partied a lot, didn't, didn't train, and showed up in Wembley kind of overweight, out of shape, and totally paranoid, like, you know, nervous about right. the, the big moment. He, I guess he thought he was a really nice warrior kind of thing. And I don't blame him for thinking that. I mean, he, you know, he just got himself in that mindset, which is what you sort of have to do sometimes. Um, but he, I remember the first part of the, I, all, all I did every night, I trained for this match. I put every, I put so much into the match. I think it, that's why it's always been my favorite. I was so determined to have the best match, baby face match and show everybody what a baby face match could, could mean, what you could do with it. Um, the first 30 seconds of the match, Davey went blank. So I think I had my rear chin lock. He goes, I'm blank. I lost, I lost him. Almost panicked, which is another reason I always talked about how <clears throat> sometimes me and blowing my own horn, but how good I am. Um, I carried Davey for like 37 minutes. He was so blown up, he could barely, in the first 10 minutes, if you watch how blown up he is. Right. If you watch the last three minutes, he's not blown up anymore. That's how I worked with him. 
Um, he picked me up for a slam. I jumped up all on my own. I did all the work. I did all. I worked. I worked twice as hard for both of us. I worked uh, you, like you could double the thirty-seven minutes. Davey was um, he was spent in the first three four minutes of that match, and it's one of the only matches where you see me talk. Right, they cut you can bust me out. To me, that you're not a good worker if they bust you. They can bust you for talking. But, right. You know, even my brother Owen, I used to catch him talking all the time. Some guys talk. To me, if they catch you talking, that's like a really bad no-no as a worker. Right. That's one of the only matches where I get you could catch me a couple of times. You know, literally calling the spots that maybe forgot all of them. Um, but it was one of my best matches. The drama, the emotion. You, know, you could tell. I think that was also the, what made me. I knew that that match, there would be an outpour, an outcry of sympathy that people, because I was really over in England, really, really over, and Bulldog was over. But to be really honest, I was more over in England than he was. You know, that's the truth. And, uh, and he was really over a lot. But I think when he walked out, when I walked out, they had to cheer for the English guy. And they felt bad after when I lost. Right. I was like, geez, you know, like we really wanted the other guy to win. Huh. Um, I think that sentiment went everywhere, and that match is what made me. That was the match that, that uh, the, the defining pinnacle start of my uh, rise to um, to being the the best worker maybe in the business at that time. I think that's what I was. And right. I think I remember Flair and Randy Savage watched it, and uh, we got back from the pay per view. We watched it in a hotel room, and I'll, I'll never forget that they, they both came to my room and. Pounded on my door and shook my hand. So that's the greatest match we've ever seen. 